So uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, middle class. You've been, like I said earlier, you've been rather vociferously articulating the tax burden of the middle class. You think the government is going to listen this time because these demands are not new. They are made every time there is a budget which is to be presented. Uh, so what do you think uh, the government is going to do this time? Well, the government better listen. You see, the middle class yeah. has been unhappy in the last election. The percentage of voting has come down. Yes, the middle class has supported Prime Minister Modi and NDA, but they're very angry and upset. You can see them all over. Talk to any middle class person. They're all angry and upset. Their patience has come to an end. And you must give them right. relief. You made them pay through their nose all these 10 years. And they've honestly paid. And today, remember, every single penny is coming in the tax net with 26A, right, in the form, which is good. Because you can't evade yeah. taxes. But individual tax collection is going up by 20% a year. And I think that's very good. So you must give them some relief because they have suffered with high uh, inflation in the last many years with high school fees because the school fees and the rental is not captured in the inflation for the middle class. Yeah. You look at the housing, the housing that has gone up, right? Interest for EMI has gone up. So I think there is enough money. See, today there is enough money to give relief for everybody. So, so what kind of what kind of reliefs, what kind of reforms, what kind of changes, uh, what kind of steps on this front would you like the government to take? Well, let, let me say for the middle class, they must, like they say, revamp the tax lab and give an option. You go with the old tax lab with many, many breaks or you go in the new tax lab. If you go to the new tax lab, like I suggested, the loss of revenue may be 50, 60,000 crores. And today, income tax collection could go up by 1 lakh crore. They budgeted for 11%. It could go to 15, 16%. There's enough money on the table because today, when you, when you cut the tax lab and give them a simple tax lab, you normally have an increase from the un unincorporated corporations and proprietorships who declare income. I remember when I was doing my CA many times, you know, my senior used to tell me, people used to come to the office and say, ye bar mujhe 50,000 tax dena, kitna income dekana hai. So a large right. number of, you know, local businessmen always talk like that. They'll get more money in the books. Like a former revenue secretary said, when the tax rate came to 25%, pele to ek rupiya diya to do rupiya khate mein aata tha, abhi ek rupiya diya to teen rupiya aata hai because 25. And that has improved tax compliance. There must be a break. That is it. Now, let me explain about money. I think it's important because I'm it's not pie in the sky. You know, RBI yeah. dividend 2 lakh 11,000 crores, budgeted 85,000 crores, 1 lakh 30,000 crore more is coming, is non debt. And this year to 24, 25, there's a possibility RBI will do it because in, they're, they're putting the money into deposits with the Federal Reserve and bond. Last year, they got 4.2% yield. This year, too, they may yeah. get about 4.2, 4.5. There'll be enough money. So next, day, right. so next this year too, there's enough. This year there's money. Next year too, there's enough money. There's one lakh thirty thousand crores more, and then the tax collection may go up by another one lakh crore compared to the budget because last year about twenty-seven thousand crore more was collected, more than revised estimate. And this year is eleven percent growth, and we can easily take a twelve percent growth because that will be the nominal growth rate this year, and that's about uh, you know uh, two lakh uh, thirty thousand crores. About forty fifty thousand crores will come. Uh, more by, uh, let us say, dividends from the public sector enterprises. Last year, I think right. the dividends something like 20,000 crores. So we're going to have 3 lakh crores, out of which 50,000 crores will possibly go to the states because 50% sure. of the tax collection, 42% goes to the state. So there's 2 lakh to 50,000 crores, 1 lakh 40,000 crores possibly for the DBT, 50,000 crores for the middle class, and the balanced money can be spent on infrastructure or anything else. So I think there's enough money because remember, if you don't do yeah. it now, the impact will be not felt over the next five years. The first year is very important. Don't bring down the fiscal deficit. It's 5.1, only 5. Don't bring it down more like some people say. Keep it as it is. Don't right. borrow more money. But spend the money where it has the largest impact, increasing purchasing power. The benefit of this will be seen next year and the year after that. And if you do a large-scale DBT, you solve the biggest challenge for India. Lack of purchasing power at the bottom of the pyramid. Second biggest challenge yeah. is the middle class ang angst and anger at being left out of the gravy train. Give our viewers an overall picture of what kind of a budget do you think this is going to be, keeping the political compulsions and the last 10 budgets presented by the Modi government in mind. Do you think this will be a mazboot budget or considering BJP now has to worry about allies like TDP and JDU, uh, a mazboot budget? I think it will be a Madhbud budget for a simple reason. We have done very well in the last 10 years. GDP has gone up from 2 trillion to 3.6 trillion. 
113 lakh crores to 296 lakh crore. That is fantastic. Per capita income today is 2 lakh crores. And Prime Minister Modi has said very clearly that the next five years are going to be much, much better than the last 10 years. The last 10 years were a trailer. So I think this budget, he has to set the tone for the next five years. To set the tone, we have to see what are the big challenges about India. The big challenge for him, big challenges are one, we need to increase the purchasing power at the bottom 50% of our population. The bottom 50% is dependent on agriculture. They get only 73,000 rupees as part of the GVA per head, whereas industry is maybe close to 2 lakhs and services 3,60,000. The trickle-down impact is not working so much because people who depend on industry and services for the livelihood are receiving much bigger increases in their income. So we have to have a direct impact on them. Second, we have to create a huge amount of jobs. We are creating a huge amount of jobs, but 80% job pay less than 20,000 rupees, and that is a problem. And there's accumulated stock of people in North India who don't have good jobs, because there are good jobs in South India, not in the North. And these jobs have to be done in North India, across the areas where there is surplus labor. I think that's the second issue. The third issue which has to be done is that we have to make sure that we placate the middle class. The middle class all over the country is very unhappy that they are paying the majority of taxes. They are not getting any tax reduction. Inflation has been high. Cost has been high. Student fees has gone up. Living cost has gone up. Quality of life in our cities remain poor because of traffic, even though things have improved. And they need to see reduction in the taxes. And income tax collections are going up at 20-22%. They need to see reduction, not the silly thing that has done in the last two budget of having five slabs, seven slabs, and giving breaks for uh, housing. For example, only one crore people have housing loans, or maybe six to seven crore people who have uh, salary income, including uh, pensioners. That is the next thing. Next, fourth and fourth is we have to improve infrastructure so that, you know, next five years, we invest more than we did in the last 10 years. That's important because that is going to improve productivity and create the kind of jobs that you want. And then, like you said, we have to stop tax terrorism. Tax terrorism is a big threat to India. They're the biggest challenge. The tax authorities go amok. I remember in March, two or three founders of startups called me and said they got calls from people to say, we're going to add back your, uh, you know, the capital that you raised for angel tax, and I'm going to add so much. Give me some money. I want to put it on record. Right. They're being misused by right. people for seeking. And then we got the ED, CBI going after people and not completing the work. I mean, you know, it is good to have ED, CBI and other regulators a free reign and no political interference. But you must tell them to file a charge sheet in two or three years and complete the case in four years. There must be justice. You cannot keep people hanging for investigation. You know, in the last 10 years, I think about 50,000 HNIs have gone away from India. India is one of yeah. the countries with the highest amount of HNIs. About two and a half lakh, three lakh crore of income has gone away. So we must tone them down, make them accountable. Tell them you've got to, six months to investigate, file a charge sheet, finish the cases, and stop high pitch demands, complete uh, total amount of arrears. I think these are the five big objectives. And for that purpose, this is what my suggestion is. One, we must have a DBT program for 10 crore women who get uh, subsidized gas under the PM scheme to give them 2,000 yeah. rupees a month uh, for 12 months, starting possibly uh, from uh, September. And there is money for that, and I'll explain that, because that will be a direct injection of money at the bottom of the pyramid, and these are women who will take care of the families. There is a DBT program already, easy to do. There will be no loss of money or misapplication of money. That will take care of the bottom of the pyramid.